Yo, bro, you're nearly at a, uh, at a million. I know. What do you post? Just... I talk about ancient history and the potential that our history books are not complete. Not necessarily wrong, but very incomplete. What if I Dang. told you I could take you down a rabbit hole that could completely shatter your reality? I'll follow you then. Imagine this. Imagine we had a time machine. And we can go back in time to 15,000 years ago, which would put us right before the end of the last ice age, when temperatures globally were far cooler. I think the average temperature was like 43 degrees. Massive megafauna, like the mammoth, hairy rhino, saber-toothed tiger, giant sloth, the American lion and camel, and many other gigantic mammals roamed the Americas and the rest of the planet. Can any of you actually look up a picture for me to help illustrate this? Sure. Look what do you want up. me to search up? up? Younger Dryas, D-R-Y-A-S, and you're going to find a bunch of graphs. And this is temperature data that we've collected from Greenland and the Antarctic, where they drill these ice cores into the, into the glacier, to the ancient ice that was deposited thousands of years ago. And they measure the oxygen isotopes and the trapped bubbles in the ice to know what temperatures were a really long time ago. But anyway, just pick the first graph you see, and you should see on the graph where it says Younger Dryas, and you should also see a 15 at the bottom right hand side. So that's what we're talking about. That 15 represents 15,000 years ago. Temperatures globally were far colder, resulting in 17 to 20 million square miles of ice, two to three miles thick, to cover the northern hemisphere of the planet, completely covering Canada and parts of Eurasia. Resulting in ocean levels globally at the time to be 400 feet lower from where they currently are today because all that water was frozen on land landlocked in the glacial ice right yeah. coastlines were completely different during this time period millions of square miles of land was exposed to the atmosphere for thousands of years during the pleistocene who knows what was going on on those beaches but if you look down at the graph you can see it around thirteen thousand years ago there is a sudden crazy spike of temperature, huge spike of temperature, that then plummets and zigzags back down into freezing, colder than it was at the peak of the Ice Age. And it's during this moment when all of the megafauna begin going extinct rapidly. The mortality rate all of a sudden just goes through the roof. And this lasted for about 1,400 years. After the Younger Dryas, there is another crazy spike of temperature globally around 12,000 years ago, that then levels off and calms down into our modern warmer climate called the Holocene that we've been in for the past 10,000 years and our civilization has thrived. Now, from freezing to warm, from start to finish, that transition, that temperature change, only took a few decades. Climate change on a scale that makes anything we complain about today look like a walk in the park. And once it happened, all of the glacial ice began to melt rapidly. And the water would pool into huge, massive, deep lakes surrounding the glacier inside the bowl it was sitting in until it could no longer hold back the weight of all of that water and break. Releasing the most cataclysmic floods down the landscape you could ever possibly imagine. Think of a thousand foot body of water several miles across, tearing across your neighborhood at 60 to maybe even 100 miles an hour, depending on how steep it is. Everything would be turned into gravel and sand. And once all of that ice melted, all that water ended up somewhere. So ocean levels globally rose by 400 feet to where they are today. And 11,600 years ago, when this flooding likely finally finished taking place, humans just like you and I were walking the surface of the earth. And it would have appeared to whoever survived off of any coastline or island as if their entire world just went underwater. And it was likely this transition and event that gave birth to the Noah's Ark story within the biblical flood, but also all of the other cataclysmic world-destroying flood myths our species have been passing down for thousands of years all across our planet. That's a lot of information. I know, and we're only scratching the surface, bro. Okay. That's pretty going? cool, I'm not even gonna lie. I know. Imagine, now imagine yeah. this to help illustrate the concept. Let's imagine that our civilization completely collapses. Society comes to an end, electricity goes out, we cannot turn it back on, and we are now plunging back into another stone age as an extinction level event takes place. Really, really bad stuff, okay? But let's imagine 
that you survived the initial devastation of whatever it was, and you're surviving with a group of people. And things are going pretty good for you, all things considered. And you build your tribe and adapt to your new, more primitive world. But still retain all the knowledge you have. Time goes by. You would grow older. New children are born into this world. And there you are one day, as the oldest person of your group, sitting by the campfire, telling all of the youngest children of the times before. And out of nowhere, randomly one day, unexpected, a military plane screeches across the sky from horizon to horizon. And you had no idea anyone still had the ability to fly them. It's been so long since you've seen one. And now here you are, trying to explain to these terrified children who have never seen a functioning plane before as to what a plane is. You explain what it's made of, its function, its history, to the best of your understanding. And let's say you draw a picture for them to the best of your capabilities on whatever material you have available to you. Because all those children would have ever have seen was this mysterious small winged thing roaring across the sky. Time goes by, and you, along with everyone who knows what a plane is, would eventually die. And now here are these children, and their children, explaining to their grandchildren as to what a plane is to their best memory from what you told them. And thankfully, they have your drawing because now there's no visual in the sky. So, this story of a plane that you have constructed and put an image to now gets passed down from generation to generation by this ever technologically devolving and understanding group of people for 12,000 years. And by the end of those 12,000 years, the picture you had drawn is long gone. Your image and name have been changed in some way, likely deified. And the plane flying overhead has become a fire-breathing dragon that showed up after the world was destroyed. Everything you explained has been completely warped and twisted into this mythological story that doesn't make any sense anymore by itself. Because it is just a frantic attempt to remember the previous story of a 12,000 year long telephone game. And this would explain the confusion, contradiction, and mysticism behind all of the ancient stories our species have been passing down for thousands upon thousands of years. Because this is just our attempt to remember our ancestors' stories and what they went through. So instead of arguing with who has the correct story like we've been doing for thousands of years, killing one another over and getting nowhere, we should back up and view all of these ancient myths at the same time, to where we can now find and make the connections in which they all share. For an example, the biblical flood, the Noah's Ark narrative. Not only is this a cataclysmic, world-destroying flood myth, but so is the story of Atlantis. And there are hundreds, if not thousands at one point, of these world-ending flood myths all across our planet from every continent and culture. And these stories, I believe, are the PTSD memory of that horrific event 12,000 years ago when the glaciers melted, peeking its way out from behind the shadows of myth. Crazy. <clears throat> so, you're saying, like, sort of like Chinese tales, or wh yeah. what it's called, where it gets passed from one person down exactly. to another, and it it changes a minor, minor bit, but over, like, thousands of years, over it changes a lot. Over generations and thousands of years, yeah. yeah. Especially if you're trying to relay complex, very in-depth complex information and you have to explain it to somebody who has no grasp or understanding of what you're talking about. Like if you were try if you're going to try to explain, imagine, let, let's change the script a little bit. Let's imagine that you survived that cataclysmic event. And instead of like building a tribe of people, you know, you all of a sudden years later after you after the initial event just accidentally stroll up into the camp of some primitive tribe in the middle of the amazon these people have been living with nothing for thousands of years and if they don't kill you and eat you to begin with because they're all probably starving they might try to go on to live with you right and let's say they bring you into your tribe and, and you're adapting and, and figuring out how to survive and here you are now you don't look like anyone else, and you don't understand a word anyone is saying. And here you are trying to explain to these people as to who you are and where you came from. But no matter how hard you tried, even if you learned their language perfectly and drew pictures in the sand with a stick to the best of your abilities, no matter 
what you do, these people will not have the ability to understand what it is they're being told. They've never seen a city before, a light bulb, a car. They probably have seen a plane in the sky, medicine, a smartphone. Anything you did get through to them in any substantial way to be passed down to their descendants and remembered would sound like a mystical story from the beginning. And it would be their descendants that would go on to speak of the time before. Times when the gods walked the earth, healing the sick, creating remarkable buildings, having the ability to fly and even go to the moon. And in time, even we will become myth and the great cycle will start again. Damn. So you're saying that there could have been a civilization just like what we have for thousands of years ago. I wouldn't ago. say just the like. I, wouldn't, I, I don't think we have enough evidence per se to say that whatever was before had like electricity the way we do and they definitely weren't burning any type of fossil fuels like we do because so far as I'm aware we don't see that in the archaeological record like that like we're depositing all these you know minerals and stuff down into the layer and once this get gets buried eventually where we are that'll be preserved and when we you know dig into the ground we don't see the kind of production that we're doing so i wouldn't say that it's like what we have but imagine this our, our current models of history state that humans, homo sapiens, people basically just like you and I have been around for at least 300,000 years. 300,000 years of us walking around. And they say that our cognitive thinking capabilities didn't show up until around 47,000 years ago, roughly. I honestly probably think that's much older as well. But let's just give it to them. We didn't start thinking this way until 47,000 years ago. So that's about 30,000 and a half years of us just like us walking around before the Younger Dryas, where that massive temperature fluctuation hits us, right? And we're told that we were just small hunter-gathering tribes still living in caves, hunting mammoths into extinction with sharp sticks, and farming along a civilization hadn't started yet. And then directly after, one of the most cataclysmic events to have happened in the last five million years, all of a sudden, we decide to create agriculture, civilization, mathematics, philosophy, astronomy, and everything that gave birth into the modern world we live in today. I believe this to be utter nonsense, because there's been this intense mystery for a really long time now that the ancients, something with the ancient world is not right in our history books. That's why people have to go to aliens and, and all these crazy, stupid things that are a distraction in my book. What I believe is that human beings long ago had, if they had the same thinking comprehensive capabilities and problem-solving skills as we today, we should expect something far greater from them than just stone spearheads. Imagine if like a Greco-Roman like maritime seafaring civilization existed 20,000 years ago. Wooden boats, wooden docks, most of their buildings are probably made out of wood and, and like some kind of clay or stone. How much of that would survive 20,000 years up until today, going through the Younger Dryas? How much would survive till today to be recognizable as anything significant at all? Like nothing, really. The only thing would be whatever they carved from stone. Now think about it. If our ocean levels globally rose by 400 feet, imagine the closest city to a coastline you can think of imagine it going under 400 feet of water and then just sitting there for 12,000 years and to give you some perspective the titanic has been underwater for over 100 years now and at its current rate of decay give it another 500 more years and you'll no longer re recognize there was ever a steel boat deep in there and in fact where it's at it's being more preserved if it was closer to the surface where more sunlight could get to it Sure, there may be, there may be, might still be a boat there, but you couldn't tell. It just looks like the ocean floor. So imagine everything off of every coastline disappears under hundreds of feet of water for 12,000 years. We could probably agree at that point that most, if not everything, would either be completely gone or unrecognizable to whoever would exist later if they even searched the ocean floor to begin with. And keep in mind, we have only physically observed 8% of our ocean floors today. So... The only thing any survivor, if they made it that far and long, would still see from us would be whatever was still on land. 
and the only material, if it wasn't destroyed, changed, or manipulated by the future cultures and civilizations to adopt our ruins that maybe might retain a glimpse of what it was before through the thousands upon thousands of years of natural erosion it's about to go through would be whatever we carved from stone. Like, for example, in America's Mount Rushmore and the ruins of Hoover Dam and anything else that's like carved into a mountainside. And all we have from our ancient past is what they carved from stone. And they are the greatest structures this planet has ever seen and has never seen again since. Damn. So, you know how you said, how you're talking about that Chinese tale mm -hmm. thing, how things change along? Mm -hmm. Would you say that the Bible isn't as it originally was? Um, very likely not. Like the very first story written or told that, that became Genesis, like to me that that just screams that there's something encoded into this story that we have to decipher. It's not per se that there was one man and one woman that was, was created and that's how it was. No, I think that this is just the attempt to remember information from a really freaking long time ago. And it's been so skewed and warped and twisted that it's turned into this, what sounds like a fairy tale. <sighs> Like, what does the apple even represent? You know, you talk to a religious person, it's supposed to be like, you know, it's the, the, the sin of man, like, you know, all that kind of stuff. But, or is there a more symbolic meaning to it, not per se in a religious aspect, but scientific? I don't know. Yeah. Cool. Okay. That's, mm -hmm. that's really interesting. Would you, could you, would you say that something like that could happen to our civilization that absolutely. we go through like some like an asteroid or something oh, ab absolutely 100 yeah. percent. we pass through the torrid meteor stream twice a year the torrid meteor stream it happens in late june and no yeah late june and late october early november is where we pass through it takes about two weeks to get through it each time and imagine putting a blindfold on and trying to walk across a 16 lane highway and you don't know the time of day or how hard you know how bad the traffic is there could be bicycles there could be mopeds there's cars and then there's trucks and we've been able to pass that highway twice a year relatively unscathed like like there have been impact events but most of them happen over top of the ocean where nobody's there to see or hear it so um, it is it, it is possible that we get hit by another object. Now, is it going to be massive extinction level event? Very likely not. Uh, very likely not. But I mean, it could very well be the Tunguska level bad event. Let me look this up. Tunguska. This is in 1908, so in the early 1900s, a what they believed was a fragmented comet entered the atmosphere and exploded with the equivalent of like. 180 Hiroshima, no, a thousand Hiroshima nuclear bombs, atomic bombs, excuse me. And it leveled and flattened 800 square miles of forest and set 200,000 square miles of forest on fire. And the object never even hit the ground. All it did was just burn up and blow up in the atmosphere. And the eyewitness accounts of it are quite remarkable. People talking about how like just a ball of fire came out of the sky and just decimated the forest and because of the you know the time period very very few people especially in siberia and russia where it took place understood what a meteor even was so after the event the, the people who were closest to it formed a religion saying that the fire god Adgi had descended to earth destroying the forest and animals as a punishment for the transgression of their wickedness That's really interesting. I but know. I'm not even going to lie. I know. That's... I love this yeah. stuff. Well, yeah, it, was, it was nice talking to you. Very I nice talking really you found some things that you said really interesting. And, um, yeah.
Hello my fellow lifeforms, I hope you enjoyed that video, I had a great time putting it together and it was just an overall awesome conversation with that younger gentleman. Now a quick shout out to my sponsor, The Water Machine. It's the first all glass gravity fed water purifier and with how things have kind of been going, it's probably a good idea to have some kind of way to filter your own water. It's two carbon filters can filter a gallon of water a day for 10 years, saving you money and also helping not contribute to pollution. Not to mention that you'll be drinking far cleaner water than what's coming out of your tap. I've been using mine for a little over two years now and I absolutely love it. I don't drink water out of anything else. So if you're interested and also want to help support me, be sure to use the link down below and use my promo code RIBUS to get 10% off on your order. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and if you would like to help support me even further, you can become a Phantom Universe Patreon with the link provided down below. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more content. Also be sure to follow me on TikTok and Instagram. Instagram, and I'll see you all next time. Later.